G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today, what are you looking at? Well, what you're looking at right now is a about two foot by three foot section of a table. We're going to be talking about terrain. I'm hosting an event at the end of the year, and I want to go through some of the terrain I've been working on and talk about terrain principles on tables in general. All the time we see different uh, events, competitions, what have you, and different styles of tables that people create, both good and bad. Obviously, there's the infamous uh, London GT, which we spoke about a couple of years ago, which used just pieces of styrene insulation. No paint, no texturing, nothing. Just pieces of insulation, quickly hot glue gun together, and they charge people a fortune for it. Not exactly the winning combination. There are certain principles when it comes to making a table. It doesn't have to look great. I do think, though, that if you're going to charge money for an event, it should look great. Uh, and great within reason. If you're charging $5 entry to your event, it's going to be very different to if you charge $500 entry to an event. Um, that said, $500 would be whew, one hell of a rich event. So this terrain here is my oldest terrain that's going to the event. It actually goes with this particular game mat, which is a 4x4 mat in reality. Just the little table I've got it on right now is not 4x4, hence I've condensed the terrain a little. It goes with this additional stuff off to the side. Um, which is a whole bunch of Citadel Woods. This particular table is a Nurgle theme table, and in particular it utilises the Zomortalis rules out of the Horus Heresy Black Books. Hang on a minute, Zomortalis is for things like dungeons, uh, inside spaceship hulks, prisons, that kind of thing. What the hell am I doing with it on an open tabletop? We see the rules are written with hazardous environments in mind, and hence the Nurgle Swamps table. This table has things like these craters, which yes, they're area terrain, but they're also difficult, dangerous terrain. There are poison habit, uh, hazards on the table. There are night fight limitations due to the fog and smog on the table. What this does, it turns an open tabletop, which would otherwise just be craters and trees, like any other 4x4 gaming table, into something that's tonally very different without dramatically changing up the structure. Now, how much terrain do you put on a table? Ah, now that's, that's the grand old question. Now, keeping in mind what you can see in the camera here is much smaller than a 6x4 tabletop, what I'm going to do is take away some pieces of terrain and try and use them to emphasise what I think a table should be based on all the events I've been to in the last 23 years. So, a table really needs three big pieces of terrain. Three big line of sight blocking pieces of terrain. Now this table being a little bit different, we have three woods that can go spread out across the table diagonally, horizontally, vertically, whatever it may be, based on the deployment of the table. But three big terrain items is key. The reason you do this is because you don't want the tables to just uh, play to the shooting armies. Think something like the Tau or the Iron Warriors. You don't want them to have an exclusive run of the table because it's just an open messer. That's no fun. You need to find the balance point. For me, I have noticed just looking over dozens of tables over the years that three big items of terrain seems to be the key here. So, what might a big item of terrain really be? Because conceivably we're not going to talk about craters all day. So I'll put the craters and the rhino aside and show you something I've been working on. Now there are two particular things. First is this three piece uh, piece of Necron terrain I've printed up. I haven't even started painting it yet. I'm gonna turn that into its own video painting and weathering this stuff. At the moment it's just in base colors. The second is a Tyranid or Infestation piece of terrain. Now two very different pieces of terrain, apart from the fact they're both long. Uh, one is significantly shorter than the other, if I show them side by side. This is about 50% bigger, if not more. 
Also, not only is this taller, but it's got a wider footprint than this little boy. But what benefits do they confer? Well, again, you gotta think about the miniatures on the tabletop when it comes to the scale of your terrain. So I have a Ray Librarian, a Solar Auxilia, a Charonite Ogren, a Leviathan, and on top of that, we also have a Lehman Russ, an Aurochs, and a great unclean one. So why the hell have I chosen these to demonstrate the terrain? Well, it demonstrates the effectiveness of the terrain. So, for instance, this Tyranid piece of terrain here is an excellent line of sight blocking terrain for basic units and non-aggressive units, things like uh, well, the Solar Auxilia guy or the Librarian. They can comfortably hide behind this terrain. Even the Aurochs fits below the line of sight of this terrain. However, offensive units from pretty much the Charonite onwards, who struggles to hide behind the terrain, once you start going for bigger units than that, that's where this terrain starts to become more difficult. You see, a Lehman Russ sticks out over the terrain and can actually shoot through it, but it can also be shot at from behind it. So whilst it's good cover and it does block some line of sight, that tank is still going to get shot versus the Aurochs, whose silhouette should be low enough that hey, it shouldn't get shot behind there. That is giving people options when they play the game. On top of that, we also have the Leviathan Dreadnought. Now, the Leviathan Dreadnought has the same problem. It's too tall to utilize this terrain. So on the Tyranid table, this is actually a very versatile piece of terrain. And also it looks cool as shit, let's be honest. Um, again, I'm gonna paint this stuff up for you guys to see how I go about paying terrain. Um, and because I've got quite a bit of it to do. Now, this Necron piece of terrain, wow, this is a true line of sight blocker. So the table that this one goes on, people are gonna be able to really utilize this so that when they have units behind it, they're gonna be very hard to draw a line of sight through to get shots on. You're gonna be getting very good cover saves, if not outright being uh, impossible for your opponent to see. That is fantastic on a sight blocking terrain. What about the rest of the table though? What about where you don't have this big stuff? What do you do then? Well, here's some more stuff I've been working on. Necron generators. Okay, Dreadnought can hide behind it, yes. Lehman Russ can kind of hide behind it, yes. But you'll see the width you're always going to be seeing a part of that vehicle behind it, no matter how it hides. This is the stuff that fills in the other spots on the table. Little uh, patches of terrain. You might have your generator over there and then have a couple of these next to your shield generator on this side of the table. All of a sudden, you've got something that infantry units can hide behind effectively, but not completely. Something that vehicles can also hide behind effectively but not completely and you've got something that they can completely hide behind and you have this stuff mixed out uh, around the table in order to break up the table a little bit and do something unique with it so that's the goal with all this terrain i'm working on by the way uh, i believe these designs are all from sacramundus uh, who i subscribe to on patreon and you can buy the digital files for this if you want to print it yourself at home. That's what I've been doing. I'm printing a lot of uh, terrain for my event. Because I want it to look good. So, I'll put all this Necron terrain aside for the moment. And drop a crystal. Like it's all uh, 3D printed stuff. Pretty resilient. So again, referring to some of the older table stuff that I've got here, this piece of terrain here, I don't know how many of you remember this, but for years, Games Workshop sold this piece of terrain. My unique touches was well, two things. First, I filled in with just a bit of card, it was a long time ago, and uh, wood putty, glued in a piece of card, and then stippled and texture painted the surface to fill in the rhino. 
because it always annoyed me that there was a big hole in the top of the rhino for placing units on this piece of terrain. I also put things like bodies and leaves and such into the craters uh, and filled them with resin. Now, the way I got the really weird effect of the stringy stuff going through the water, uh, which you can really see on some of these other craters, is by pouring water onto it before the resin had cured. Um, I used a 24 hour cure time resin and then poured water into it. The water evaporated away and the resin that was left was all weird and pockmarked by it. Just a cool little thing I came up with on the fly. And they're painted with textured paint. So this terrain here, as I said, difficult and dangerous terrain for being inside it. And of course, it's also a type of area terrain. Area terrain is important on your tables. It allows big squads of infantry to gain some cover while still being exposed and in the open. It's not great cover, it's imperfect cover, but it's something. Um, with this table as well, keeping in mind the themes. This great unclean one is perfect for a creature that belongs on the table as a roving NPC, for instance. Uh, and he will be a roving NPC at my event. So if you want to go into the swamps of Nurgle, something that himself is suited to the table and the theme and based to suit the table, he blends right in. And it makes it a little bit more fun because, again, you're doing something outside of the uh, generally accepted things that you do with the table, which is slap down a hill on each side, maybe a couple of things to break it up in the middle, and then roll dice. No, that's boring. I mean, <laughs> okay, it's boring after you've played it a thousand times. At first it's a lot of fun, and sometimes when you're in a mood to just throw some dice, it's great. But for someone like me, who's been doing this for a really long time, it is boring. I'm over it. I've done that a lot. So I want to do different things. I want to have NPCs. I want to have tables that tell stories. And that's what these tables do. So again, I'll just declutter the table a little bit. Talk some more about this terrain. So on this tabletop in particular, as I said, we have trees and we have craters so trees these areas are area terrain yes but they also help block line of sight this piece here is like the trees it has some slightly line of sight blocking elements in its tree branches and its area terrain but it's still very open so again that's where we apply the uh, zone mortalis rules to the tabletop all of this that you're seeing all these different craters and all these trees is perfect for my games of heresy on a 4x4 table and maybe a 6x4 table spread out with one or two items added. This may look like a lot of terrain to people, but again, you've got to understand. This is for a big table. Um, that's very low in terrain density. As opposed to a terrain uh, heavy table, which has very tall terrain like a city fight table. So something to keep in the back of your minds when we discuss tables going forward. Anyway, that's all for now. I'm back with the outer circle. Next time we do one of these videos, we'll be painting some terrain. See you all then.